Okay, so in this video, we will be considering the topic of random variables. Well, the name kind of gives it away. A random variable will be a variable that is assigned values in a random fashion. And the key thing is the variable has to be a numerical variable. Let's look at two or actually three examples. And there are two types of random variables. There are discrete random variables and there are continuous random variables. So consider the first experiment. Let's roll a regular sixth face die and observe the upper figure. So the figure on the upper face. So our experiment would be rolling a regular sixth face die. And we always use uppercase letters for random variables. So here in this case, x would be the figure on the upper face. And when you look at the actual values that x can take, we use lowercase x. So always use an uppercase x for a random variable, a lowercase x for the actual values. And here x can be equal to 1, you can roll a 1. Or x may be equal to 2, you can roll a 2, or a 3, or a 4, 5, or a 6. And now we say here x being the figure on the upper face after we've rolled the die is called a discrete random variable. Discrete means you can actually count all possible values that x can take. Here we can count them, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, there's only 6. So here x is called a discrete random variable. Let's consider another experiment. What if we consider, say, uh, the weight of a randomly selected person? So think of it as you're walking along the street, you pick someone at random, and you actually consider their weight. So that would be x would be our random variable. The weight, say in pounds, of a randomly selected person. Well, this is a random variable because as you choose a different person, you'll get most likely a different weight, and that's the random part, and the actual values are numerical, right? When you take a, r a person at random and you weigh them, you have a numerical value. And now the question is, whoops. Let me just rewrite this, discrete random variable. Okay, so now as you take on people at random, you'll get different values for their weight. And now, well, you can't list all possible weights, right? The weight will vary over an interval. So if you think here, x will belong to, and now, what you'll have will be values ranging over an interval. You could go from you know, 0, even though someone will always have a positive weight, but you can go, say, from 0 all the way up to, say, 300. It could go higher, but just for the argument's sake, suppose we go from 0 to 300. So the difference from here to here is that the values that the variable can take on cannot be counted. You can't list all values from 0 to 300. It's not possible. So when the values of x range over an interval of real values, we say that in this case, x is a continuous random variable. That is the main distinction. If you can count one at a time the values that x can take on, it is a discrete random variable. If the values of x are ranging over an interval of real values, we say it is continuous. Let's look at another example. What if you're 
standing by a road and you're looking at the cars driving by and you record the color of the car. So X would be the color of a passing car. Well, this is random, right? As different cars drive by you, you'll observe different colors. The problem is that the values you would actually uh, write down would not be numbers, right? You'd write down red, blue, green, yellow, brown, black, white. So they're not numbers. And a random variable must be a variable that randomly takes numbers as values. So here, because x does not take on numbers but actually colors, here x is not a random variable. And so that's really the criteria. X must be taking on random values, and those values must be numerical values. If you can count them, X is a discrete random variable. If the values are ranging over an interval of real values, we have a continuous random variable. Now the question is, what quantities are we interested in when we have a random variable? Right? You have this example, you're rolling a sixth face die, and you observe the figure on the upper face. As you roll the die over and over again, you'll see different values. The question is, well, what's the average value of a random variable? If you roll the die over and over again, what value do you expect to see come up most often? And, well, how much variability is there in the random variable? So we want to look at the average of a random variable and the variance of a random variable. So, suppose we have a random variable x, we will write its average, and sometimes we'll use the word mean, same thing, and we'll also use the word expectation. All three are synonyms. You're saying, on average, the mean of x, the expectation of x, so what do you expect x to be on average? And we usually write this with two different letters. Mu, this is the Greek letter M called mu, and this is for mean, but usually we'll write E for expectation, an expectation of which variable? x. And the expectation is just the average. So, you say, well, how do we find the average of a random variable? We simply have to sum over all possible values, right? Uppercase x means the random variable. Lowercase x means the actual values that the random variable can take. And here we say, well, we will sum over all values of x, the value times the probability that the random variable equals this particular value. If we compute this, then we'll get the average, the mean, of our random variable. Then we want to look at the variability of our random variable. Well, this is called the variance, and we'll use a familiar letter for this. If you remember for a sample, we used s squared for variance. Here we'll simply use the Greek letter s, sigma, for variance. So it's sigma squared. And we also sometimes write v of x for the variance of x. Well, what it is is the average distance from the mean. So once you compute this, you'll have a real number for mu. And you ask, on average, how far do I expect my value to be from the mean? So it is the average distance from the average value squared. And we compute this by summing, again, over all possible values, the value of x minus the average value squared, so the distance from the mean squared, times the probability that the random variable 
is equal to this particular value of x. And this will give you the variance of the random variable. And finally, we have the standard deviation, which is quite simple, right? We use here standard deviation. And if sigma squared is the variance, the standard deviation is simply sigma, and that's just the square root of the variance. And that's it. So those three quantities are the key quantities for every random variable. What is the average of the random variable, the mean? What do we expect it to be equal to? How much variability is there in the random variable? This is the variance. And because we square it, this will be artificially bigger. And by taking the square root, we get the deviation, which is a more reasonable measure of variability. In our next video, we'll consider an example of a random variable and we'll compute its mean, its variance, its deviation, and we'll also produce what we call the uh, probability distribution and the histogram for the random variable.